What do children want from their teachers? What makes a teacher good? In today's world, is it enough merely to be an educator? Any teacher who thinks that they can go into a classroom and just be there to impart facts, to deliver the curriculum, to educate, without any interaction, without any effort to build up relationships with those pupils, is going to find teaching difficult. Increasingly, people are placing an emphasis on relationship building in the classroom. What makes a good teacher is not simply to educate, but the ability to relate to pupils. Very few teachers have the opportunity in their training to learn about children's emotional development. For some children, school might be an uneasy and hostile place, and relationships with teachers can be strained and difficult. I felt my teachers just kind of looked down at you, that they are higher than you and better than you. So in this programme, we ask why teacher-pupil relationships are important and what can be done to make them work with all children. This is Jake. Jake is 17. He left school at 14 after being excluded from mainstream school twice. It was a relationship with a particular teacher that helped turn his life around. He now works as a trainee chef in a restaurant in Harrogate. The job's important to me because I don't think there's much else I could do anywhere else. So I think working here is just going to help me achieve what I want to achieve in life. Jake's planning to meet up with his teacher that helped get his life back on track later in this programme to try and understand what made this relationship work and what we can learn about the importance of relationships. For Jake, finding a job he enjoyed made up for a very difficult time at school. He was never able to relate to his teachers and started misbehaving as a result. The school just got fed up with me. Just the time and popped my bags and got somewhere else. So it was, a bit, it was a bit of my mum's choice as well. But it wasn't really working, so it was just best to leave. Primary school was probably best for me. It, it dealt with me pretty good, because even when I misbehaved, they just took me out of the lesson. They didn't, like, kick me out or anything like that. They still let me work. He, the list still let me do all the same work as the other people. Instead of just being sat doing nothing. I like PE but I'm not very healthy, so it didn't really work. I quite like music, but not a music teacher. I liked English. Um, that's only because the English teacher, and she, and she knew that I was smart, but I didn't behave. So she just lets me sit in the class and do my work, which is all right. But no, I didn't really like anything that's gone. I was living at my mum's ever since I was born, really. Um, and then I moved out when I was 15 and 16 to my dad's. They separated when I was eight. But I moved out of my mum's because I was growing up. I was growing up pretty fast and I don't think my mum liked it. And then we just argued about what I thought was best. She obviously had different opinions, so it didn't really work out. Jake's never been able to relate to authority, so he doesn't like to be told what to do. He has very short attention spans, so he doesn't like to sit in a chair for too long. He doesn't read vastly well, he doesn't write vastly well. So he didn't keep up with lots of his school friends, so he was classed as either a troublemaker or just naughty. Teachers asked me to do something, I'd say no, and then say, all right, well, you can have like a yellow slip. I was like, all right then, give me two. He was just fighting and generally being abusive to people. Uh, teacher in my first year of school, I asked him why zero wasn't a negative or a plus, and he wouldn't explain it to me. So I started effing and blinding, standing on his chair and screaming at him. That wasn't good. What um, happened? I got suspended. Jake's always had problems with school. Um, since he started going to nursery school, he's always been very boisterous, and they thought he was attention seeking. And so, because he didn't fit in, they didn't want him at school. So that's been from very early on. I mean, he started nursery school at two and he's always been different. And then when he went to full-time school at four, that's when the problems really started happening. 
Jake's behaviour at school led to frequent punishments from his teachers. You used to have to stand outside the dinner hall for like 45 minutes of your dinner break. How often did you do that? Uh, two or three times a week, probably more. I was only ever at school like two or three times a week anyway. Behaviour consultant Rob Plevin is used to dealing with kids like Jake and changing their attitudes to school. From the child's point of view, they've got to feel that they belong in a classroom, just as they feel that they belong at home or they belong with their peer group when they're out in the yard or when they're out outside school. Now, when that feeling is there for, for a pupil, for a child, for a young person, for anyone, then they feel that they can open up, they can take risks. And so far as learning goes, that's very important. And yes, it's important for high achievers, it's important for middle-of-the-road pupils, but it's, it's very important for those who feel that they don't already belong in school, they already feel that they're, they're cast out. Relationship and family counsellor Denise Knowles also recognises this in her work. You know, some children are going to feel naturally as if they don't want to be at school. And I think for teachers that must be very disheartening and also very difficult to deal with. And it's about sort of asking, well, what's, what's at the root of that? What's causing this? Could it be that this child is actually having difficulty in learning? Do we need to actually explore that a little bit further? Do we need to know what's going on at home? Do we need to actually spend time with this child apart? Or do we need to spend time with this child in a little group? Can this child find it easier to talk to us sort of generally, in general terms, rather than on a one-to-one -one basis? So it's actually getting to know what the child is about. And, you know, most children that have got negative attitudes towards school, there is something else going on for them. And they can't express those negative feelings perhaps in other areas of their lives. So unfortunately, teachers and the school cop for it. Jake's mum feels that Jake lacked the support he needed from his teachers. Every school that Jake went to, and there was um, Ofsted inspectors going in, Jake had to have the day off school. So he didn't disrupt anything and cause any problems. He'd been uh, sent out of class one day and he was at the library and he'd heard one of the teachers ring one of the other teachers up and say, oh, that little sod Jake's here again, he's been excluded out of class. Uh, he's so naughty, I don't know what we're going to do with him. And he actually wrote a little note and um, and it said that he wasn't... Oh, it makes me really upset. <laughs> he wasn't naughty and that he didn't know how he could stop himself. Jake's experiences at school and his negative relationships with his teachers have left him with little regard for the value of education. I don't need qualifications. Everyone says you do, but I ain't got any. I haven't even got any GCSEs, I've got two, two E's, maths and English, so I don't, I don't really need them either. I mean, I can write-ish. Jake feels that the inability for him to relate to his teachers prevented him from achieving his potential in school. He knows many others who feel the same way. So are we really beginning to recognise the link between emotional well-being and educational success? How much emphasis on relationship building is there in British education today? These questions increasingly form part of academic research. Obviously we think relationships are important and teachers strive to make good relationships with children. But at the same time, um, they're under a lot of pressure to focus on the academic outcomes as well. There is very clear evidence from the research that teachers and students feel under enormous pressure to do well in tests and exams, like the National Curriculum Tests, for example. So, I mean, we have got a situation then in which, because of the world we live in, the relationship between teacher and student is ever more important, and yet a variety of policy pressures pushing us towards a much more results-driven view of education, which is militating against the work that needs to be done to create relationships. The Tavistock Clinic in North London has recognised the need for teachers to create an environment of well-being in order to achieve educational success. Katie Argent, child and adolescent psychotherapist, works with schools to build and nurture the relationships children have with adults in a school environment. There can be a feeling of tremendous pressure on uh, professionals, including teachers, 
working with children and young people, particularly when, when uh, the children or young people are in some difficulty, to provide as much as possible, really, or to provide everything. And of course, you know, none of us can ever do that. And we need a team, and a team is may, may be a team within a school, but it may be that a team within a school joins up with other agencies as well to provide um, the best possible support for a, for a child or for a, or for a young person. Clearly, teachers have terribly important jobs and carry a lot of responsibility and play a, a hugely important part in um, helping children to develop in, a, in an ordinarily healthy and uh, uh, constructive way. And maintaining some sense of the value of boundaries in that, really, is also very, very important. Um, and of course there are some children and some young people who do seek to engage their teachers in a way that takes a teachers beyond the role of being involved in a learning and teaching relationship. And um, I think that's a very difficult position for, for teaching staff to be, to be put into and needs a lot of thinking about. And it's exa at exactly those times that, you know, all of us working with children really need our teams to help us to do that thinking and to not feel that we can find our way all on our own, that, that we need other people's perspectives, perhaps the perspectives of other professionals as well. A good teacher is someone who's polite to the students, can lead down straight for them, tell them what to do and like, the, that gives respect to the students. When you need someone to be there, he needs to be there for you or she needs to be there for you. A good teacher comes down to your level and, and like helps you. You can have like a one-on-one-to-one -on -one -on -one relationship with a teacher. You're not scared to ask the teacher for anything. To form relationships with pupils, it's important first, of, first and foremost to show those kids that you're interested in them, that you're there for them and that you're there to support them. Showing that you're interested in them means finding out what their interests are. It means that you're not having to grasp in the dark for something to say to them when you meet them at the, at the dinner queue or in the bus queue or wherever. Being there for them is, is equally important. Once kids know that you're there for them first and foremost, you're there to support them and help them, then they can start to trust you and that's when the re relationship really starts to develop. I think first and foremost a teacher needs to be available. A teacher also needs to get down to the child's level. That's not to say that they've got to become sort of adolescents or childlike themselves, but perhaps just even sitting down, sitting on the floor even with the child I think is really important. And actually giving the time to listen to the child. Not sort of being critical, but asking open questions not sort of closing the child down. And simple kind of communication tasks and skills that actually could be very, very useful, such as, tell me what's been going on in your day today, or what was happening last night, or that looks really interesting, what's all that about? You know, what are you going to be doing at the weekend? And actually sort of having a genuine interest in what's going on. I like my teacher because she's always trying to keep me safe. I like my teacher because she, she, she smiles at us. I like my teacher because her be nice to everyone. Apart from taking an interest in pupils, it is argued that part of building a good relationship is being able to use different teaching styles for different pupils. The teachers are going to have a class of maybe 30 or more children there and not all of those children are going to have the same light learning style. Teachers have to be very aware of the fact that you've got all of these different children, maybe all at slightly different levels, all eager to learn or not, and all of them will be learning in different ways. And so if you have a child that perhaps isn't picking up a subject as easily as they're picking up another subject, Maybe it's just that this particular subject needs to be taught slightly differently. Some children will, you know, learn very easily by being told what to do and listening. Others will learn very easily about reading. Others may need to be able to draw it out and be creative in their learning. And it's all about actually recognising what it is that the child is good at and then developing different ways of teaching the same thing. There are tactics that teachers can use, for example, encouraging a greater degree of um, the use of assessment for learning, of providing rapid formative feedback for children, for students of all kinds, so that they do get a sense of 
being on a journey, knowing where they need to go next. If you like, the relationship with the teacher is partly a pedagogic relationship in which the teacher can use her or his expertise to work out how best to reach the student. If you've got a child who's really into active learning, and if you try and explain to that, that child or that, that teenager, whatever age they are, if you try and get them to sit down and listen to instructions, you're going to have a fight on your hands, or they're certainly going to start being, being vocal. So having something ready for them to get on with shows that you know them well. You know that you're paying attention to what they need. You're paying attention to their specific needs. That's yours in the corner, David. You can just get on with that. They're doing the same lesson content. They're doing the same learning objectives, but they're doing them in a different way. Since the main problem for Jake in school was that he felt alienated from his teachers, we sent him to meet with other young people to find out how their experiences were different. How many high schools have you been to? Just the one. Just one? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> how many there is it? No, only one. Only Just one. the one here. That's like, how many? I went to Barbridge, went to Chain Lane uh, for like six months. Then I went back to Barbridge, and then I went to uh, the pre IU in Harrogate. So, oh, just none of them worked did out. Did you there. struggle with the work or did you just not want to do it? No, it was Doddo. <laughs> you just didn't want to do no, it. No, it wasn't interesting. It was, I found it so easy, it was just not interesting. Yeah. You know I mean? Do you just like it when they give like, the work over or explain it to you? Yeah. Which one? Yeah. yeah. More um, explaining art. Yeah, explaining. Because I knew what to do, but oh, it just makes you feel better if someone explains it. You know mm. what I mean? And yeah. sat there with like, five, instead of just giving you some work saying, oh, well, this needs doing. Yeah, I know it does. I'll do it in a minute. Mm. But if somebody comes over, sits with you for like five, ten minutes, yeah. says, all right, this is what you need to do. Maybe does like a problem with you or something if you're in maths, or like an experiment with you if you're in science and that. So it's good. Mm. They need to know what you're interested in at yeah. school, and they need to like take into consideration everyone in the class's different interests, because otherwise you're just going to have some people that aren't going to want to bother at all. So you've just got, they've just got to like think about what everyone wants and try and help everybody like separately. But do you reckon that'd work in a school of 500 children? Or do you reckon it'd only work in a school, uh, school full of like 15? It depends how big the classes are, don't it? And how much the teacher's willing to sort of take their own time to get to know everyone. If the teacher's going to be really nice and get to know you, then you know, you're going to be more likely to want to listen to them yeah. and then you're going to do better in your lessons. It's very difficult to focus on relationships, to make relationships paramount in your teaching when you've got 35 to, to 40 even kids in the class. And, and the things I was talking about, about finding out what their interests are on an individual basis, to do that for each class that you teach and, and 30 plus kids in a class is, is going to be nigh on impossible. But really, we don't have to do that. A lot of children and a lot of young people find that their sense of belonging naturally in a school. They find that they su succeed there, they feel part of the classroom, they feel part of the environment, they feel part of the school. We're looking at the ones that don't feel like they belong in school. They're the ones who cause the problems. For them, school's not a friendly place. It's not somewhere where they can thrive. It's not somewhere where they're, they feel that they're doing well. They feel that they're left behind. They feel that they're, they're cast out, they don't feel part of it. So they're the ones that we've really got to work on. I mean, I like it as well when teachers seem to push you, but not push you in a bad way. Mm. But like, so I say, you can Challenge do it. Challenge you, don't yeah. they? Yeah. yeah. I can't Just, do this, yeah, you can. Mm. No, I can't, all right, and I'll explain it to you, and then you show me you can do it. Yeah, you know what just I mean? boost your confidence mm. of yeah. the world on it, yeah. And then at the end of the lesson, you're like, all right, I've got all my work done, I feel good, I like that teacher, mm. and my confidence is high. And I know I can do that work now. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And you know you've learned something, and it's just like, yeah. uh, and then work out every teacher. You know what I mean? It only takes five minutes out of the lesson. Do you know what I mean? It's just ridiculous that the teachers just stand there and go, all right, turn to page whatever, yeah. and write down, and just do all those sums. Yeah. All right, then, you're not going to explain how I do it. Nope, you can read the book. You don't all learn right. anything from reading the books, though. At no. all. If, you, if you're told to read a textbook, you're not going to learn anything. If the teacher, like, reads the textbook and explains to you while they're reading it what it means and using different words to what it says in the textbook, you're going to understand it a lot better. Yeah, understand it and get further. Yeah. For Jake, talking about teacher-pupil relationships with his peers wasn't what he expected. 
I think it's really good. I didn't realise that so many other people thought like exactly the same way, you know what I mean? Jenny, for instance, she liked school and she got really good grades, but she, yeah, she still said her teachers could improve. She's really weird. My perfect teacher would be a teacher with a sense of humour, a little bit strict and knows how to deal with children properly and fun. I think a teacher who is very understanding to children is kind, helpful, but a little bit firm. My perfect teacher always uh, helps us when we were stuck on something. I actually started asking pupils what they wanted from their teacher. The same answers came up more or less every time. Someone who's there for us to support us. Someone who provides information in a fun way, gives fun lessons. Someone who is firm but fair. Someone who listens to us. And that was the, the key one that came up every time. Someone who listens to us. When he was sent to Harrogate Pupil Referral Unit, Jake met a teacher he felt was able to listen to him and relate to him. Right, this is the River Ned. It's not particularly deep out here, but nevertheless, should you slide down this bank, you'll be for a nasty shock because that water's freezing cold. Dave Hamilton has built many good relationships with young people who find school difficult through activities such as sports and fishing trips. He has given those who felt completely alienated a new outlook on education. I got on with him really well. Perfect. You can remember what we said about the treble hooks on here? I uh, we used to go out and uh, we went fishing, played football together. And, uh, Stuff like that, it was really nice. To take all of that, when I was feeling like angry and that, I used to just sit upstairs uh, in the workshop with him. We used to eat dinner together, just sit down and talk for half an hour, then go back to lessons. It used to chill me out. Uh, if I didn't have that, I don't think I would have been at school to get any qualifications whatsoever. And I know they're not really important, but people still like to know, and you've got them. Jake decides to go and see his old teacher to talk about what it was that made this relationship so much better than all the others he's had with his teachers. Hello, Jake. Hello, sir. How are you? How are you doing? I'm all right, how are you doing? Nice to see you again. Yeah, good to see you too. Yeah? Um, we haven't caught anything yet. Remember the first time I took you out? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. I enjoyed it. You did? Good. What was I like when I first came to school? My own particular memories of you were, um, on occasion, wanting that space, wanting that free time, wanting somebody to recognise that you were about to explode and you needed somebody who could um, relate to that yeah. and give you that a bit of space. Um, I guess I was in the right place at the right time. I felt I could relate to what you were going through and give you that opportunity to get the free space. Can you remember when you, know, you were about to virtually explode and can you remember what was going on in your mind at that time? So uh, when I was about to explode, it was like, right, well, if I punch him in the face, if I kick him in the jaw or something, it's just going to be like, oh, I'm going to lose nothing. Yeah. I'm, so, I've got nothing to lose, so why not? Yeah. But now, I still get angry. But I, I've always thinking to myself, well, before you lose it completely, just think you've got a job now. You've got your family behind you now, and yeah. you're not arguing with them anymore. But when I was about to explode in school, I don't think there was anything that would have stopped me from doing that hmm. until you gave me that opportunity again. Hmm. My own particular um, techniques for teaching the, the likes of you, Jake, and, and others that have come before and, and after is being able to give you the space that you would require. Not expecting huge amounts of um, skills initially. Um, people build up skills very slowly. And um, also that if you've got a particular limitation on something, it's not gonna be easy for you to cross that barrier if you're being forced to cross it. Yeah. The thing about education is that um, a lot of people think that they don't want it, they don't need it. But it does more than provide you with English and maths and everything. Uh, it can provide you with some very basic understanding of life. Because w if we're doing things constantly wrong, 
and, and we're not recognising why things aren't improving for us. We really have got a problem. Yeah. Because you, you've got yourself to look at. A moment in your life, nothing's going right for you. Nothing seems as if it ever will go right for you. So why bother? It's not gonna. It's not ever gonna change. But it will. It well, always you, changes. It's like the carrot and the stick method. If it's you've got always, that in front of them, do you know what I mean? Yeah. If there's something in front of a person, yeah. they're always gonna go. If I improve this little bit, it'll be recognised. And then maybe next week I can change to a little bit else. Yes. Yeah, so it's just. As, as, as a statement from yourself, two years ago, three years ago, you wouldn't have said that. There's no way you would have said that because you would have just blanked that off as a complete, you'd have said, there's no way, nothing's ever going to improve me. I'm going to be like I am for the rest of my life. I think I said that and at one point. You've actually said that to me at one point. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm sure many other teachers yeah. as well. You were at a point in one time where you didn't know how to handle your behaviour and yeah. how to handle everything. Now you know, so you've done a great job. Thank you very you've much. understood a lot, you've come a long way. The most fundamental thing about making a good teacher is that they should like students, that they should like the relationship with learners. But I don't think that we talk about relationships enough and it seems to me the kind of unsung but fundamental underpinning of a successful learning encounter.